Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, April 17th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Well, it took less than a week and it's out. We got all the details necessary in order to exploit the Palo Alto Network's global protect vulnerability. Turns out the vulnerability is a directory traversal vulnerability in the session ID. So the way the exploit works is that the attacker would send a cookie. That cookie takes advantage of this directory traversal vulnerability to write a file. And that's sort of where a second part here comes in. That file is then being executed by the telemetry component. Watchtower, Rapid7 and others have uh, written some good detailed write-ups about how this vulnerability exactly works and how it's being exploited. But we are now seeing sort of these random internet-wide uh, exploits. I posted uh, one in a diary today. This particular version of the exploit uh, that uh, was observed and was sent to us does copy the configuration file to a readable directory. So an attacker could basically use the exploit, copy the configuration file, and then just read it by pointing a web browser to the file that was created. Well, there are a couple of constraints the developer of the exploit had to overcome in order to make this a working reliable exploit. In hindsight, of course, these are always pretty easy. And at this point, it should be pretty straightforward to deploy your favorite crypto miner, ransomware, or web shell in order to further exploit the system. And over the last couple of days, a uh, vulnerability in the very popular SSH client PuTTY uh, was discovered that puts the private key at risk in case you're using the NIST P521 curve. This particular elastic uh, curve algorithm, like uh, all similar algorithms, does rely on a nonce, a random value that's unique to a particular connection as the keys are exchanged. If the same nonce is used multiple times or if uh, the nonce is guessed then an attacker is able to deduct the secret key and with that compromise the SSH connection. The problem apparently here with PuTTY is that they created an nonce that's only 512 bits long, not 521 bits. That led to the first few bits always being zero which enables an attacker to retrieve the secret key by observing 60 signatures essentially. 16 new connections. Putty versions from 0.68 to 0.80 are affected by this vulnerability. Earlier vulnerabilities did not include this particular algorithm, so they are not affected by this vulnerability. Other software derived from uh, Putty, like FileZilla, WinSCP, Tortoise Git, and Tortoise SVN are affected as well. And Oracle released its quarterly critical patch update for April 2024. This particular update does fix 441 different vulnerabilities. The number, as always, is large, but it also covers a large number of products. I quickly sort of skipped through it. There are a few sort of 9.8 vulnerabilities, so CVSS score of 9.8. They are pretty much all related to some known vulnerabilities in open source components that are used by various uh, Oracle products. Definitely apply the update, but uh, totally understand these are complex updates to apply in particular for some of uh, the more critical uh, products uh, delivered uh, by Oracle. And Ivanti released an update for its Avalanche mobile device management solution. This fixes a number of different vulnerabilities Couple of highlights here. There are two 9.8 CSS score vulnerabilities. They're both heap overflows that allow arbitrary code execution for unauthenticated users. Also interesting, a number of 8.8 .8 vulnerabilities. So CSS score of 8.8. .8. 
they all are requiring authentication, but then allow for the operator code execution as system with a directory or path traversal vulnerability, just like what we just had with Palo Alto. There are, think about uh, eight or so vulnerabilities whose description looks pretty much identical. This update, according to Ivanti, will also apply some new security hardening. They do state that you need to have your MS SQL database password available as it's not stored for subsequent installs. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.